Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is June 2nd, 2021 and we are on the second day of African Scientists and Inventors Month. Now, this is not an official month in the United States or any other country as far as I know. But here at Today in African History, we are declaring June 2021 International African Scientists and Inventors Month. And we're going to kick the month off by taking a look at the man who was largely responsible for the light bulb and the telephone. Louis Latimer, who was born on September 4th, 1848, is considered one of the most important African inventors for the, the number of inventions he produced and patented and patents, I should say, that he secured, but also for the importance of the best-known discovery of a longer lighting filament for the electric bulb. He also helped Alexander Graham Bell obtain the patent for the first telephone. Mr. Latimer was in great demand for his ex expertise later in his career as electric light spread across the country. Indeed, without Latimer's help and expertise, Thomas Edison may not have received a patent for his light bulb. Yet, possibly due to the whitewashing of history, Louis Latimer is not well remembered today for his many lasting accomplishments. As I said, Louis Latimer was born on September 4th, 1848 in Chelsea, Massachusetts. He was the youngest of four children born to George Latimer, a paper hanger, and Rebecca Smith Latimer, who both escaped enslavement. His parents had fled from Virginia in 1842 by hiding beneath the deck of a northbound ship, but his father was recognized in Boston by a former employee of their enslaver. George Latimer was arrested and brought to trial, where he was defended by noted 19th century activist Frederick Douglass and William Lord, William Lord Garrison. But eventually, a group of activists paid $400 for his freedom. George Latimer, however, dis disappeared shortly after the Dred Scott decision of 1857, in which the U U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Scott, an enslaved man, couldn't sue for his freedom. Possibly fearing a return to enslavement, La George Latimer went underground, and it was a great hardship for the rest of the Latimer family. Now, some people may have criticized George Latimer, but a little aside here, let's remember that in 1850, Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Act, which allowed slave owners to pursue enslaved people who had escaped into free territories and re-enslaved them. This would, from my point of view, explain why George Latimer would have gone underground after the Dred Scott decision. Now, Louis Latimer worked to help support his mother and siblings. But then in 1864, at age 15, he lied about his age in order to enlist in the U.S. Navy during the Civil War. Young Latimer was assigned to the gunboat USS Massasoit and received an honorable discharge on July 3rd, 1865. He returned to Boston and took a position as an office assistant with the patent law firm Crosby and Gould. Mr. Latimer taught himself mechanical drawing and drafting by observant draftsmen at the firm. Recognizing his talent and promise, the partners promoted him to draftman and eventually head draftman. During this time, he married Mary Wilson. No, not the Mary Wilson of the Supremes, another Mary Wilson. They got married in November 1873, and the couple had two daughters, Emma Jeanette and Louis Rebecca. Louise Rebecca, I should say. In 1874, while at the firm, Mr. Latimer <coughs> co-invented an improvement to the bathroom compartment of trains. And two years later, he was sought out as a draftman by an instructor of children who were hard of hearing. The man wanted drawings for a patent application on a device that he had created. The instructor was no less than Alexander Graham Bell, and the device, of course, was the telephone. Working late into the evening, Mr. Latimer labored to complete the patent application. It was submitted on February 14, 1876, just hours before another application was made for a similar device. So with Mr. Latimer's help, Bell won the patent rights to the telephone. Without Mr. Latimer, somebody else may have gotten the patent rights. Now, in 1880, after relocating to Bridgeport, Connecticut, 
Mr. Latimer was hired as assistant manager and draftsman for the U.S. Electric Lighting Company, which was owned by Hiram Maxim. See, Maxim was the chief competitor of Edison, and he had invented the electric, you know, we know Edison had invented the electric light bulb, which consisted of a nearly airless glass bulb surrounding a carbon wire filament, typically made from bamboo, paper, or thread. When electricity ran through the filament, it became so hot that it literally glowed. Maxim hoped to improve on Edison's light bulb by focusing on its main weakness, its brief lifespan, typically only a few days. Mr. Latimer set out to make a longer-lasting light bulb. He developed a way to encase the filament in a cardboard envelope that prevented the carbon from breaking up, giving the bulbs a much longer life while making them less expensive and more efficient. Well, without Louis Latimer, we might still be in the dark today. Mr. Latimer's expertise had become well known and he was sought after to continue to improve on incandescent lighting as well as arc lighting. As more major cities began wiring their roadways for electric lighting, Mr. Latimer was selected to lead several planning teams. He helped install the first electric plants in Philadelphia, New York City, and Montreal up in Canada. He also oversaw the installation of lighting in railroad stations, government buildings, and major thoroughfares in Canada, New England, and London. <clears throat> Mr. Latimer was in charge of setting up an incandescent lamp department for the Maxim Western Electric Light Company in London. As part of this role, he supervised the production of his own invention of carbon filaments. Yet, it was in London that Mr. Latimer suffered some of the greatest discrimination he faced during his career because English businessmen there were not used to or receptive to being directed by an African. Of the experience, Mr. Latimer wrote in his diary, quote, in London, I was in hot water from the day I came until the day I returned, unquote. Still, Mr. Latimer succeeded in setting up the, the division. Louis Latimer started working for Edison in 1884 and became involved in Edison's infringement lawsuits. He worked in the legal department of the Edison Electric Light Company as the chief draftsman and patent specialist. He drafted sketches and documents related to Edison's patents, looked over plans and searched for patent infringements, carried out patent searches, and testified in court on Edison's behalf. More often than not, Mr. Latimer's expert testimony helped Edison win his legal patent court fights. In such high esteem did the courts hold Mr. Latimer's testimony. He never worked in any of Edison's labs, but he was the only African member of a group of, known as, quote-unquote, the Edison pioneers, men who had worked closely with the inventor in his early years. <clears throat> Mr. Latimer also co-authored a book on electricity published in 1890 called Incandescent Electric Lighting, a Practical Description of the Edison System. In subsequent years, Mr. Latimer continued to innovate. In 1894, he created a safety elevator, which was a vast improvement on existing elevators. Then he obtained a patent for locking racks for hats, coats, and umbrellas that was used in restaurants, resorts, and office buildings. He also developed a method for making <clears throat> rooms more hygienic and climate controlled, named an apparatus for cooling and disinfecting. Louis Latimer died on December 11, 1928, in Flushing neighborhood of Queens, New York. His wife, Mary, had died four years earlier. Now, despite racism and discrimination and with unequal access to education and opportunity, Mr. Latimer played a major role in the, the development of two products that greatly impact the lives of everyone in the world today, the light bulb and the telephone. The fact that he was an African born in America in the 19th century made his many successes even more impressive. Upon his death, the Edison pioneers honored his memory with these words, quote, he was of the colored race, the only one of our organization and was one of those to respond to the initial call that led to the formation of the Edison Pioneers, January 24, 1918. Broad-mindedness, versatility in the accomplishment of things intellectual and cultural, a linguist, 
a devoted father and husband, all were characteristics of him, and his genial presence will be missed from our gathering. Mr. Lattimore was a full member and an esteemed one of the Edison pioneers, unquote. On November 9, 1929, Mr. Latimer was among the figures honored at the Light Golden Jubilee, or the Light's Golden Jubilee, which was an event celebrating the 50th anniversary of Edison's invention of the light bulb, and it was held in Dearborn, uh, Michigan. Yet, in 1954, at an event marking the 75th anniversary of the invention of the light bulb, quote, no mention was made of the role played by Lewis Latimer, wrote Lewis Haber in his book, Black Pioneers of Science and Invention. He also added, was the only black member of the Edison Pioneers already forgotten? <laughs> Unquote. No reason has been given for Mr. Latimer's exclusion from the 75th anniversary event, but the occasion did take place during the Jim Crow era, a period when federal, state, and local laws barred Africans in America from being full citizens. Mr. Latimer was honored on May 10, 1968, when a public school in Brooklyn, New York, now known as PS56 Lewis Latimer School, was dedicated in his honor. During the ceremony, a painting of Mr. Latimer was presented to his grandson, Gerald Norman Sr., who was at the event, which was also attended by Latimer's granddaughter, Winifred Latimer Norman. The New York State Legislature, the president of the borough of Brooklyn, and a member of the New York, um, New York City Board of Education also pay tribute to Lewis Latimer. Now, I hope that this short introduction to Lewis Latimer will encourage you to learn more about him. I recommend the book Blacks in Science, Ancient and Modern by Ivan Van Sertima. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed to this channel. To those of you who have not yet subscribed, this is a great time to go ahead and tap that subscribe button just below the screen there. Please like and leave a comment down in the comment section. But most importantly, please share, especially with the young amongst us. Remember, they won't get this information in school. So, until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalam.